from there, Billy did. The goal, Chris Billy Huddersfield Town. The most famous goal of Chris Billy's life. Is this the moment for Lee Fowler? It is. Take your place in Division 2, Huddersfield Town. Thank you. Champion Steve Simonson's boots now. He's missed. Steve Simonson clears the frame of the goal and collapses in a heap of tears. Huddersfield Town are promoted. Stuffer Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. Hello and welcome to episode 188 of the Andy Takes That Chance podcast. This week has been an incredibly bleak one for Huddersfield Town. A 4-0 defeat at home to Cardiff, followed by a 4-1 defeat to Leeds United at Elland Road. Pre-season and early season tweets from our very own Ginger Ogre have resurfaced, which were debated and argued with by town owner Kevin Nagel over the squad strength. And after this bleak couple of weeks, we ask ourselves... Has there been a reckoning in town's boardroom as they reassess how good they think this actual squad is? And that's all we have time for this week. Thanks to Richard Kusmala, Danny <laughs> Kiran, and Ian Kilroy Silk for joining us. Um, I wish I wish it was that simple, lads. I really do. Um, I would have quite happily postponed this podcast, but Cosy turned into Freddie Mercury and said that the show must go on. I'm not sure if it was Freddie Mercury who said that, but it'll, it'll do for this one. I'm sure he said it at one point. Uh, and one thing that goes on is our sponsorship with Magic Rock Brewing. Um, you can use our code of AHTTC10 at www.magicrockbrewing.com uh, Magic uh, and you'll get 10% off all online orders at checkout. Uh, right, guys, how are we doing? Um, it's been a great <laughs> couple of weeks, hasn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, so um, let's talk about Danny. Danny, we have not had you on the podcast for a while. How, how are you doing? What have you been up to recently? Uh, I'm good, yeah, I'm well. Um, uh, I finished uh, filming in France a couple of months ago, and I'm waiting to go back to France next year. So I'm just being a dad at the moment, which is nice, because we had a baby in February. So, yeah, I'm enjoying that and just chilling out and watching town lose. <laughs> That's... <laughs> And that's um, the Serpent Queen, isn't it? That was season two of the Serpent Queen. Season two, and then it looks like we'll do season three, pretty sharpish. So that's good. good. That's, well, that, that's you not being killed off, then, isn't it? So there's a spoiler there for anyone that watches the Serpent Queen. Yeah. And yeah. to be fair, the the best thing about the Serpent Queen is the is the Biscuit Brothers, isn't it? So the um, as they as they're called, yeah. Um, so anybody who's not seen that, check it out. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, right. Okay, let's let's get into it. Let's stop putting it. Shall we put it off a little bit more? Killer, what have you been up to now? <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's just get into it, shall we? Um, Leeds for Huddersfield Town one. Let's start. Let's start here and just pull the bandaid off and get it over and done with. Uh, right, it's Halloween week and Town turned up in a first half that was as spineless as a ghost, as ghoulish as Oswald the Outrageous, and showed all the mobility of the great undead. It was a horror show, or a chesty horror show, if you like, starring Danny Curran. Maybe not starring Danny Curran. We'll work on that. Um, I, to be honest, I looked at the team sheet, saw the system, and I just immediately wanted to turn around and go home. It was just the most uninviting team selection I think I've seen before. You know, comparing, contrasting the two sides, it was it was painful before it kicked off. And and let's get one thing right before we get going, and that is that Leeds United are a very good side. Um, I've predict, I predicted to predict to them to come second in my uh, pre-season predictions behind Leicester. And I don't think I'll be wrong about that come the end of the season. Um, they've got pace, inventiveness, solidity, and they've got a lot of weapons uh, which can hurt any championship side. There's a lot of weapons on this podcast, isn't there, at the minute? But, <laughs> um, but for every part of them being good, we were an absolute shambles, a, a debacle, if you like. Um, to switch from... Five at the back to a back four, including Tom Edwards at right back, who is one of the most slowest players we've got and not set up to protect that back four is one of the most brain dead selections I think I've ever seen. Um, I'll concede that our injury situation is pretty horrific, isn't it? And I do sympathize with Darren Moore as we're, we're down to the B team lads. You look, you look at the bench and 
there's not a lot of game time between them. And, you know, we only had really one senior player, Matty Pearson, probably the only senior player on the bench. And But none of these players are playing to Darren Moore's tune at the moment. And that's the, the concerning thing. Um, we'll just walk through the goals because, you know, the game is all about the goals, really, the first half, isn't it? Because it was just... <laughs> <laughs> four, four goals, it was, it was painful but the first goal comes from uh, Tom Edwards trying to throw the ball to Mikhail Helic, who has three players around him, there's other, there's other players th- free and he's throwing it to someone with three around him, it's it's madness and then when of course Helic doesn't win the header he stops and watches uh, Rutter, it's Rutter isn't it, who pops the ball over his head and Somerville's in it's just so basic and then Dan James gets it and Yuta Nakiyama might as well have bought a ticket and sat in the copy backed off that much and and to be honest I've seen Lee Nichols save those as well so the goal was just so it's great for them because they're watching that on the counter and they're thinking yeah we're deadly on the counter but where we watch it from our point of view and we watch the, the backpedaling and it, it's just and the thing is as well we'd start quite well the first 10 minutes or so we'd soaked up the pressure and we'd We'd got out a couple of times. Bergsorg had got down the flank, and uh, we'd had a couple of small relative successes, so you know, territory-based successes, you would say, rather than anything that's tangible to you know an attempt on goal. But then you could see it. Leeds United worked us out within ten minutes, didn't they? Really, and you could just see the screw twisting, turning, and it was easy. And it just that first goal just really stood up quite a lot of the day, and it? it was just so so easy, Danny and. Yeah. I just, I just, it was, it was embarrassing, really. Just the way it, it was too easy. Nakayama, there was nowhere near him. He was nowhere near him. He just let him put it in. It was like a training game. It just didn't. We didn't. We didn't look right at all uh, defensively. But I can't understand why he played. He, like you said, that he changed. He changed the defense like that. I mean, you're asking for trouble. I think going from you've been working on a five all the time apparently, and then you work, go to a four, a, a, a ground that's really difficult place to go. I don't understand why you do that. So you know we're back, we were already at sixes and sevens. And that killer, point. I mean, yeah, killer. That the the game plan for Leeds United is simple, isn't it? You sit deep, you soak up the pressure, and you try and counter. You don't throw your fullbacks or push your fullbacks quite high, knowing that they can't get back if they break. It's just is it just me or it's mental honestly what we saw yesterday i can't excuse, i just can't excuse it like normally i think when you're looking at a football game no matter what level it is you kind of understand the managerial decisions they make even if it doesn't work out you can kind of accept it you understand the justifications for it and now darren moore's come in and we've all been told what sheffield wednesday fans that he likes playing a back five or a back three back five however you so that's his system really historically and then it obviously has come from the back of the Cardiff game, and I think he's knee jerked a little bit on the back of that. And to be honest, while Cardiff was horrendous, it was it was a bit of a game where it kind of just got away from us. They scored early doors, then they scored from a they scored from a corner where it bounced in the box, and we didn't we didn't react quick enough. And then they were a free kick. The goals weren't like leaders on Saturday. I, I, I think he's just totally overreacted. And then to go with a back four, like you say, Matt, fast fast wingers for Leeds United, and we've gone with two of the slower fullbacks in the division. I love. I absolutely love Nakiyam, but he's not he's not a fast fullback, is he? He's, he's more a positional, clever guy. He's going to get in the right positions, but he's not a pacey guy. And it's just been absolutely battered down both sides. But the, the, the bigger problem for me is not only that he went for it, he's dropped Pearson out of the squad. And it's yeah. a derby game where you need your leaders in there like that. Yeah. So that's another pro- And he's played as a, as a fullback for us and done pretty well over the last 12 months. So it's not like he wasn't an option there. So even if you are going to a back four, I still think there was better personnel available to do it. But then the first 10 minutes, Edwards got done twice and nearly gave two goals away before they even scored the first goal. And now, to me, that's where the error is. Not that he went with this system, but he didn't adapt to it when you could see how bad it was. And he just kept it. Everyone in the crowd's like, what is Edwards doing? Why, why are we still playing like this? And he just kept it that way. He didn't keep it that way for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 1-0, 2-0. We were 4-0 down half time before he decided to change it. And now, to me, that's inexcusable. I, I can't understand how any professional manager can watch what we saw on Saturday and not change it till half time. I, I, I'm, I am still baffled today, and I, do and I, I, don't, do you know, I can't understand I, it. I, I don't listen to his post-match interviews that much because I, I just you don't get anything from it. You know, he's quite dull and he doesn't tell you anything. That's just just the way he is. 
But he he said I had to change it at half time to make things more solid. It's like why the fuck wasn't it solid in the first place? You know, it's ten, just minutes like, in, ten minutes in, ten minutes in, they've already had a goal disallowed because Tom Edwards got done, and I think if I don't know if he fouled the guy, but it was it, 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 that's where the free kick came from initially. And the, the, the score from that, I don't even know if it was offside. I was again, I was in the ground, and because uh, uh, you were there as well, weren't you? Were you all there yesterday? But there was no reception on anyone's phone, so nobody was aware of what with what was going on with TV or at home. But you could just see him making error after error after error within ten minutes, and he refused to change it. And and to wait until half time, cost his phone. And is he trying to? Was he trying to throw him under the bus? I just I just don't understand. But Tom Edwards' performance was so poor from the off yesterday. The fact he didn't change it is is, is just is mental, absolutely mental. We'll, we'll talk about Tom Edwards specifically in a minute, and, I, and I've, I'm going to feel sorry for him. I think by the end of this podcast, because he didn't have a good day, did he? Or he had a good night, apparently, but you know, not so much a good day. But less said about that. Um, Cosy, the, the second goal as well is just it's so bad because it's it's Somerville's on um, Thomas, and Thomas is trying to show him down the inside. So Edwards is stood on the outside blocking the space because some of going to cut in and shoot that's what he does he's, he's brilliant at it you know i think he's one of the best wingers in the league i think he's excellent really really excellent and you know so thomas is trying to show him down down the inside but if he goes on the outside it should be edwards and then all of a sudden somerville jinx and edwards moves to the inside and creates this massive space and it's like what are you doing and i don't want to i don't want to go in on one guy all the time but Stephen Chicken gave him a one in the examiner. No one's ever got a one no, in gonna... any match rating ever. And he's, he's just, I, I just don't understand what he's thinking or he's not thinking. And then Helic comes and Helic should be clearing it really. Yeah. And Lee Nichols should be saving it. You know, it's such a yeah. crap goal, Cosy, isn't it? It's just, and you see that going in and you just think, today's fucked, isn't it? <laughs> you just exactly. Yeah, go on. honestly, I was driving to work today, uh, past Ellen Road actually as well. I'm sure I still saw Tom Edwards there. Uh, you know, ch- jogging back. He's trying to chase some of it. Yeah. We're on hard shoulder, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what gets me mad, Matt? Do we have any scouts, right? Do we have any scouts? Do do people analyse Leeds United? Do do because all yeah. guys that I know, big Leeds fans says, "Cause it any team who's got any joy at Ellen Road this season sat Sit in deep. there, sat deep, frustrated us, and nearly burgled some results. Like obviously Wednesday did. QPR will fall later on. Bristol City." He says, I could not, they were saying, we could not believe how naive and open you were. That's what frustrates me. Who's done the preparation? Sure, mm. surely this, this, you know, I don't know what it is now. You guys know more than me. Is it, do, do, is it videos? Do, do, do a man sit in the stand like in the in previous other games? How, how does that happen? Because, or does Dada Moore just, just know all this? And it's like, well, bollocks to that, guys. We'll just do, like, you know, we'll just give them all the space and everything as well. The first, sorry, going back to the first goal, Matt, one thing that did piss me off as well, Jonathan Ong were waving everyone forward. Bollocks, because yeah. the centre-backs weren't going to go up, go up. And then, obviously, he were like pushing them forward. Eric did, lost it. And then the rest is history, mate, with that first goal. But but again, you know, is that Hawk saying it? Is it come from the sidelines? It was crazy. But, yeah, the, the the psychological damage Tuesday night did to us was absolutely huge. It was massive. And it was kind of weird. I, I was exactly like you, mate, thinking I didn't want to come. When I when he had the rumours overnight that Rodoni were out. And again, yeah. all of a sudden... Now he's going out for a number of weeks when who we could play. Don't, don't, don't piss us about that, mate. All this about Friday night, we found out about this. But were bollocks, mate. That were trying to like put that, in my opinion, put Daniel Farker like down. He would obviously want going to play. And, and I couldn't believe all that on, on the press. Like Daniel Farker's looking at our team and worrying. Yeah, yeah. exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was just, it just like, it was just incredible. And you could, it was really weird because, like you said, we had that moment where he came forward and Again, for the 500th time, Diara didn't pick the pass. And, but I would kind of get encouraged, more than looking at the clock, it was a bit kind of gallows humour, wasn't it? First of all, oh, 10 minutes in and when it's nil-nil. But yeah. like I say, they worked us out so quickly. And then Edwards and oh, the, the goal. And I don't know about you, but I think the whole 3,000 fan base, just like, we're done. And it was yeah, scary. It was, the thir- it was the third goal which killed it, the... And the third goal, I don't understand what's going on here either because Helix trying to take Rutter out near the pretty much 20 yards in their half. And if Rutter drops off, where's Hogg? Where's Wiles? Where are they sitting midfielders when, when the ball breaks down? I don't understand what's going on there, the organisation. Then again, it's just more backing off, backing off. Nakiyama's awful on this goal. He's really awful. It's one pace. 
Um, he might as well just give up and go and wave it off and go, do you know what? I can't be bothered catching Dan James. He's too fast. And there's just no... When the ball's going to get played in, there's no change of pace for Nakayama. There's no sense in the danger that the ball's going to get played in. And that that worries me about his, his ability to play in defensive systems because it's you know what's going to happen. He's pretty much pointing to it. Hey, you two, I'm going to put the ball here. And he's just still... I don't, I don't even know if he was at full pace or what. And then Dan James is in, scores, good finish. But how he's got there, he's just hmm. baffling, isn't it? And it, Matt, I said to you it, before, I said to you before, about Nakayama, where's where he's a he's a good player, but where's he going to play? And and I still think we're trying to work it out. For me, after what happened Tuesday, I can't believe he were picked on Saturday. I don't know. You say, well, who else could you put in and what have you? But as well, but I'd have rather seen you know some for the B team, mate. It was, I, um, it, was, it was shot mate to pieces, and and you knew Lee Leeds' pace and everything. It he's took an effort. I'm, I'm going to go back about Tuesday, but again, I've mentioned it millions of times. If a fullback doesn't, you know, just just do some of it, throw a tackle in. First, if first half his card, if he was horrendous, wasn't he? Horrendous, he, was, he was absolutely mate. horrendous. And yet we were we were praising. I were praising him like a month back, saying, "Oh, wow, we." He had we'll a great game against Ipswich. Game. Ipswich, Ipswich, Ipswich really. yeah. He's <sighs> I've, the the thing I've I've felt about Nakayama since quite early on is that. Physically, he's not up to it to play championship football. Technically, he's great if you if we have the ball, but we don't never have the ball, do we? So, no. te- physically, he he can't cope. He gets out muscled. He go back to Mark Fotheringham when he's he, my Japanese left sided centre back. That comment was because he got out muscled on a corner against Rotherham. And to me, I don't think that was his fault at the time. Where would you play him, Matt? Where would I play him? Yeah, or would you play him? At left back. I'm not going to knee jerk on the fact that one of the Best sides in the league of of Amadeus, but I, I wouldn't play him centre back. He'd either play left back or he'd be playing left wing back. I think for me, or or when Josh Ruffles is fit, do you play him? I think that's the other mm-hmm. question. Um, because I'm not a massive fan of Jack uh, of Ruffles anyway. I don't think he's excellent, but I don't think he gets done like Nakayama did against Cardiff. But Nakayama brings other things. He's a good passing footballer, but when you don't have the movement either for people to move, you know, for him moving off of him, then you sort of shrug your shoulders, don't you? But that third goal was a killer because when I arrived at the ground, I was in the lower tier, lower tier, <clears throat> excuse me. And the stewarding, it felt like Leeds had sold more tickets than there was avail- available seats. So when we got there 10 minutes before kickoff, you couldn't get to your seats. You know, there was, it was full. Everybody stood up the aisle way because you couldn't get anywhere near. It was, it was heaving. And the town fans were in good voice, weren't they at the start? It was Derby. It's got the edge to it. And, <clears throat> and, some of the songs going back and forth were a little bit ropey, weren't they? But you know, and then when that third goal came in, there was just a collective fuck this. And then everybody that was in that lower tier just rushed back. Uh, well, not everyone, but there was a large, a large section that just rushed back, and I got swept up in in it, effectively. And they just headed for the doors, and they were pushing the doors open at the back. Um, the alarms were going off because they obviously weren't ready to open the doors. <laughs> after 35 minutes of a game, people are walking out after 35 minutes of a championship game because we're getting arsehole. And we've got arsehole against Birmingham. We've got arsehole against Cardiff. It's a weekly occurrence and people are just going, I can't be bothered with this. And I don't I don't blame them. Um, two people I was with just went, I'm up, we're off to the pub, see you later. And left me left me in the ground and I, and I watched I watched the rest of the half underneath because I found someone that I, I knew and watched the rest of it on with a drink in, in the in the foyer and it was 4-0 by, by the time the fourth went in I was just like I can't be bothered I'm going home and I, I went at oh, half time to my disgrace that... I went at half time and I was home because I live quite close I was home before the final whistle I was you know home what, before what... Mikhail Helix scored you know what, that then leads uh, tell us a mouth behind. I remember it other season when we got battered, when Peltier and all that were carrying on. But my mum texts me and says, Rich, are you still there? It's four. And it was still three down there. I thought, oh, my God, they've not got another of them. And then, lo and behold, it goes in. Matt, that half-time, mate, it was incredible. I've never known anything like it, ever. <laughs> it was like the shell shock of the fan base. If people were walking around like zombies. It's really weird that stand, expected isn't it, it mate. I think people got... expected it. That was the worst thing. I think we knew we were off on a hide into nothing. People, and people didn't know were just like, go. I knew this. People, I knew this would happen. I'm off. <laughs> that was it. But you, you give them the chance go. to surprise you, don't they? And but I don't know. It's really weird. It's like I think some people honestly thought we had an opportunity to like do something there. I just never saw it. And but just the, the way we folded, I think. There's such lack of faith in Darren Mar- I think if, if that's happening under one, I think people's like, okay, there'll be some kind of 
hand reaction. At half time, Matt, I, I honestly were worried for eight, nine, or ten. Honestly, I was eight, nine, or ten. Yeah, I was watching it on TV. I, I, I was like, we're well, watching it on iFollow. I was like, I, I can't see us. It's going to be seven or eight. You know, but yeah, it was. It, it's just shocking, wasn't it? It was so uh, bad. People were like, I've never seen anything like it. Like pushing out of that kind of fan zone and stuff. People were. So I've heard of a, I don't know the funny story of this, but apparently uh, some guys had gone out with pints and stuff and walked up the road and Leeds fans were giving them loads of jib. So they've slung these pints over them and that, and they've gone mental. They're like, Leeds fans trying to get out of this, but the carts so was like, I think it's probably the only result we had all day and that as well, whoever sling all that beer. But it was just weird about that the people didn't know what to do, what to say. I had I had some young guys saying that. Like, I struggled to afford to come into the, to watch the games now with the cost of living and, and, and how, how can I be wanting to like spend my hard earned on this? And people were honestly, it was just incredible. That like, people, that's it. I'll finish my beer and then they just walked off into the sunset. It's just like I just wondered how anyone would be there second half. I when I got back, like the, it seemed quite full, but I've seen some pictures on some shots and wow, it looked like a good fifteen hundred had gone. Killer, did you stay? Uh... Of course, I stayed till the end. I stayed to the I absolute did. end. And I, <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, I, just I, I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. Honestly, I, I've spent a long time, obviously, away from England, so I've not been in the ground for some of the lows, and I missed all the highs. But I just, I cannot remember seeing a team so abject in, 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 in such a derby where we've got a new manager in just a few games ago. And to me, looking at what you could see on the field is the players had lost faith. And I think that's what the fans were feeling themselves. And everyone was so vitriolic. I don't know if you noticed all the chants. Were you there when they were when all the town fans were singing uh, Darren Moore's getting sacked in the morning and Darren Moore out or whatever? And the Leeds fans started singing, there's only one Darren Moore, there's only one Darren Moore. <laughs> and it just kept going back and forth like that. And that was the highlight of the entire game for me. But it, it there was, was some just... shocking chants though, Killer. There, there was, was, was chance, horrendous chants against Darren Moore. And, and I was speaking to some people at bars often, they, they thought it were disgusting. And, and of course, you get, well, you could say it was shit, but. There was some stuff that were bang out, but I, I was there's shocked. A, there's it. a line, isn't there? There's a line. This was vitriol, though, that I've never known for a town fans, and we've had fathering and you know, kind of comedy act for a long time. This was bad, and but I just didn't know what to kind of think at the end. And obviously, he stormed straight down the tunnel, which again, I, I kind of backed him a little bit on X. I can't call it X, can you? But Twitter, but part of you, so what's you supposed to say there? Stand in front and take all that shit, which you obviously would have got, but. I just think, mate, you're the leader. You're talking about leadership in your press conference. You're talking about leadership in that as well, mate. I'm sorry, Darren, but I know it were horrible, but and the chance for shit. You've got to stand there, mate, in front yeah. of that fans or whatever's left of them and take that shit. And you didn't. And I've lost. I just think that I'm not saying I've fallen out with it because I can kind of get it, but I just thought that were that were naive from more with that. I thought were really poor that, mate. I don't anyway. know. I don't know, Cosy. I don't know how we can win the fans back after that. And I think no, I uh, that first, the, the thing with the first half, what I thought, thinking about it now, what made me feel so upset about it was every time Leeds went forward, it felt like they were going to actually score. And like yeah. that, people yeah. say that all the time, but it's quite over dramatic. I think, oh, they're always going to score every that time. Was well. it, it, it felt yeah. like they were going to try and utilize the the, the wing with the Edwards on because Sober Thomas offers absolutely nothing in defense. We know that he's, he's not a defense. So you've got you've got the slowest one of the slower fullbacks in the league who's obviously struggling for match fitness at the moment, right? Oh, that's a polite way to put it. But mm. so, but Thomas isn't offering any protection. So every time it, it, every time the ball sort of works its way around that side, you were thinking, oh, shit, here we go again. And the fourth goal that we've not touched on, it looked like the freeze. You know, in America, there's a guy that runs around chasing a really slow guy <laughs> as fast as possible around baseball pitch. He went that far off the pitch, right, going past Tom Edwards. That's what it looked like. <laughs> if Tom Edwards had a 10-yard head start and lost a 20-yard race by 30 yards, and I don't know how he did it. <laughs> how he did it, yeah, yeah. He did. He almost <laughs> fell over as well, didn't he? He almost he just, fell when he went. I, it was like seeing him running treacle, right? But it was just, you could, you knew that goal was coming from the ball crossing the halfway line. And, and, and you just knew it was there. And I think that moment when that fourth one went in is when everything went to shit. Because the, the players all started arguing. I don't know yeah. if everybody was watching that because every, all the other fans were trying to leave at that yeah, point. Yeah, for that door. Mm. But the players, they, the players had a bit of a ding dong with each other, and even they. they but it wasn't like they were so angry. It looked like even they were kind of helpless with what was going on. They were so angry themselves at the the lack of play we were getting down that right hand side that, that they were ready to kick off themselves. And it just, it felt awful to be a town fan yesterday in that stadium. Um, I don't know how it came across on TV, but there 
it was it was just different, and I can't remember it being like that ever before. Yeah, it, it was like it it, it was it, it seemed like everything was in Leeds were in like no playing normally, and we were all in slow motion. I can't describe it to you. It was it was odd watching it on television, and even Oggy and Glennon were saying the same on the on the I follow commentary. But it's like you don't mind if we go to Leeds and lose, but we give it a game and we get stuck in and. You know, it's a bit close, but to be, it could, like you say, it could have been six or seven nil in the first half. That's mad. You know, however bad our team is, we're st it's still a professional, you know, it's meant to be a professional team. So there just didn't seem to be any pride in it either. And that, and that, and that for me is why I, I struggle with the more thing because it does feel like Fotheringham that they're just not, they're just not listening to him or they're not, they're not getting it. I want to, I want to just say, well, Leeds are going to beat a lot of teams four-one, and they've got better players. And look, yeah. go look at their bench. I was laughing like Bamford yeah. and Noto. Come on, it's like yeah, exactly, yeah. But I just piece it together. It's like that QPR game. We were so lucky, weren't we, to win that? Yeah. But you think we've got some confidence, and and just within like two games, it's it's like you say, killer. I think like the fans have, have had it with him and. I just don't. I, I just think I can't think of a worse game. I think on Saturday, Watford who will start a couple of results together, but it, it's going to be toxic. Make up. I'd rather the people who's got their toxicity, if that's such a word, then just don't come because I just. Yeah. I, 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 it's going to be horrible, mate. It's ab I just the windows miles off. Uh, it's, but will they, but will they even buy anyone in window because no. they're the odds not available Saturday. Uh, they can't. They, they, who's gonna, you know, who's going to want to come out as well? Like that's the thing. You, you, you're going to want to come here if you're well, playing it, like that. But it's like again, there was some right good discussions last night as the beer started to sink in. Is but we can't keep sucking managers. I kept hearing, and I agree with that. It's like where does it all end, man? We can't keep just keep firing I mean, people. I mean, we've we've, we've we've all said either on before we start that this is probably the worst squad I've ever seen in the championship. Darren Moore didn't have a chance, does he? In a lot of ways, and, yeah. and well, following, well, the fans are following Neil us, Warnock, man. not us. And uh, Neil Warnock as well. Following Neil Warnock, who who had these play, he knew the exact strengths and weaknesses of these players, and he played to that. Darren Moore's trying to play a system and realizing that some of these players are a little bit crap. Mm. And whereas Neil Warnock was like, "Right, don't let these lads have the ball. Defend, hit it long, make the other team spin around, and win the ball high up, and then do things." And it was such a basic, simple plan. That it worked, and he and he made people feel good. He made the fans feel good. He made the players feel good, and you can probably only do that in a short space, of, you know, in, in a short condensed period. But David Wagner had a similar similar sort of effect, didn't he? And but Darren Moore's coming, and he's trying to put. It feels like he's trying to rip everything up to start again. And sometimes but he said he wasn't going to do that, Matt, when he came in. That first he, first he, first he, he blatantly he has. He blatantly yeah, has. He, has. he said he wasn't going to. Blatantly has. Yeah, well, to go to, to go to Leeds, to go to Leeds, right, and go to a back four for the first time with a high press and a high back line <laughs> is suicide. It's absolute it's football absolute suicide. suicide. It's it's, it, yeah. No one else in the division will go to Leeds and try that. We don't it's have proper, an attacker. We just don't have a striker. Keen Harrett barely touched the ball yesterday. And it, he's an effort guy, yeah, and, and in time he might become something worthwhile. But asking him to do yesterday what we want him to do, is something I can never, I'll never be able to see past. Darren Moore could take us to the Premier League, and I'll never be able to see past what happened yesterday with that formation. <laughs> I, just, I just don't. I mean, it was, not, it was, it, you, you, I nearly laughed. I mean, I, I, was, I couldn't believe it was that bad. It was, you sort of couldn't believe it, could you? It was like an episode of Black Mirror. And you understand he's trying to find a, a more value out of what he's got. We are a very, very weak squad, but that yesterday was, I think, Matt, just, just too far gone past trying something new. Because it was, it shouldn't be tried again. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone want to talk about Helix's goal? What a lovely present it was from. Uh, so you mean as our leading scorer, mate? Just add into yeah. his tally. Four yeah. goals, four goals this season for Helix. Yeah, it was a strange goal, Matt. I don't, it was really weird because, like, everyone just—I think everyone just expected that lines was flagged to go up, and it, I think everyone was just yeah, in shock it? that Odysseus had scored. It, Melia made a balls of uh, <laughs> the save, and yeah, it was just surreal. And then you know what? It's football's weird, but. All of a sudden, I can't remember what happened. Something happened pretty quickly after him. When he got, we got him behind, I thought... Should we have had a imagine? penalty at one point as well? I think John. I remember Johnny on WhatsApp kicking off that we should have had a penalty, but I haven't seen the incident. Yeah, but all of a sudden... And this is what annoys me football. You've just got to stay in a game, haven't you? Because all of a sudden, 4-2... I'm not saying we're going to win like that Cagliari game today where they've won 4-3 in the last quarter of an hour, but went three down. But 
that's what I mean. If you give yourself a chance, like 2-0, we're getting battered 2-0, get to half time, you, you know, we sneak one back and they can get nervous. Our fans are back in the game. But you when you've just shot yourself in the foot, just just like we've done, it's just like absolutely no chance. And it's, it's so worrying for me because like I just want to put it down to the the, the game on Tuesday where I don't people were trying to write it off as just like a freakish game and stuff, but I just didn't see that. I just it was like psychological damage over the last few seasons all coming back. The fans going toxic, Matty Pearson shouting at the, the, the stands and stuff. Then loads of changes at halftime, just chaos. One in four changes. I mean, yeah. he's damned if he does, damned if he don't on, on there as well. Only two changes. Can you see? We're almost like, well, the bench is crap. What's the point? But it's just an absolute mess. And that Ipswich game feels like four months ago, doesn't it? It's just unbelievable. And it, I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned because... Thank God there's three lower behind us. I mean, who knows if that's going to be just a freak result for Wednesday. It sounds like Robin were awful today, so they're as bad as what we are. But January just can't come soon enough. But can more just afford what have we got? There's midweek games coming. There's a lot of games between now and then. We can Jesus, it's like, I don't know. Shall, we, um, shall we talk about the final defeat to Cardiff? Oh, Matt, why? No, no, why I'm joking. I'm not serious. <laughs> just just as a quick one, Second half, Matt. Go the ahead. second half yesterday showed we still have to have a bit of structure. I know it's easy saying that, and if more had come out saying, "Well, we were okay in the second half," I'd have been fuming. But the way we actually went in that second half is, in my opinion, now we should have gone from the start. We structured very hard to beat, looking to try and turn them around. I thought we went long a bit too much. We didn't really even try and sort any kind of passing plays at the back. It was very much just get the ball out and turn leads around and hopefully push ourselves upfield that way. But if we'd have gone from that from the off, I'd have understood it much more. I thought second half. We weren't bad, but again... To be fair, they were in the like, players' lounge, weren't they, all second they half? They were, they were, and you've always got to consider that, but it just felt like all of a sudden you brought Pearson on, and at the back line, they weren't going to break us down the same. Bamford came on. To be fair, he did have a couple of dangerous runs at the end, but it looked like it were controlled, and that is easier at 4-0, I get it. I do understand that, but it just looked like we had a bit more structure and a bit more purpose and what I expected an away team to go and do at Leeds, but it definitely wasn't the way we started it. Right then, so we've obviously got four miserable bastards on this podcast, so let's oh. bring in someone who is going to be relatively happy. So, Cosy, your pal Joe Wayneman has kindly done a uh, Leeds United oh, uh, view from his side. So this is uh, Joe Wayneman from the Just Joe Football Show. He's a good lad. Uh, does the uh, West Yorkshire show with uh, Cosy on a Thursday. So uh, let's let's read in what Joe said. Now then, lads, Joe, Just Joe Football Show, massive Leeds fan. Uh, look, what a win. The history books will show Leeds United beat Huddersfield 2-1. However, what I will say, as good as Leeds were, Huddersfield definitely helped us out. I thought Darren Moore's tactics were just non-existent, especially in that first half. The right wing-back or right-sided centre-back, Edwards, oh my God. He got absolutely cooked. Somerville had a field day. I think Somerville had a perfect 10 on the sofa score at half time, two goals, two assists. Um, they just weren't at the races defensively. Um, long term, do you worry for Huddersfield? Potentially, obviously, he's only had one win since he's been in the door. Not great, especially when you consider Warnock might end up at QPR, which is a team that's going to be down there for you. So Huddersfield tans. Uh, so, Huddersfield fans have every reason to be frustrated with what's going on at the football club. Look, I did think we'd win the game. I was pretty confident. I did say 4-0 pre-match. However, I didn't envisage it to be that easy. Um, I think, you know, Leeds United could have had 6 or 7 even in the first half, if we're being totally honest. Of course, you won the second half, but at that point, Leeds United had took the foot off the gas and brought a load of, um, you know, of the older generation on. So, it, yeah, it was a little bit easier. Not a great day at the office for Huddersfield and worry for your long term. Uh, as for Leeds United, obviously buzzing, but I'm a little bit worried that we might have to just settle for the playoffs and we never do well there. So, yeah, anyway, thanks for having me on, lads. Uh, up the whites. <laughs> Joe. Yeah, I wish it was 2-1, Joe. Uh, we'd have been quite well <laughs> the same, would we, if, if that was the case. But... Uh, yeah, thanks to Joe for doing that. He's, he's all right, he's Joe. Good lad. Um, catching with Cozzy on Thursday night. So I don't know if you'll be there this Thursday night, Cozzy. Uh, you might have, might be one to avoid. No, I've, but, uh, uh, I'm unfortunately I'm available for selection, uh, so I'm going to have to take my uh, you know, face the punishment. Music. Well, you know what, we might as well bring it in now, Matt, because you obviously mentioned the W word, mate. And uh, yeah, oh, God, if he comes back to QPR, just when you think the storyline couldn't oh, get any yeah. more 
I might, oh, you altered yes. my agenda. All right, we'll. we'll oh, we'll, right, sorry. Warnock. I'll we'll, we'll, no, no, I'll go for it. Yeah, he did mention Warnock to QPR, and that is worrying on a, a number of levels, isn't it? Because Warnock's almost like a get out a relegation free card, isn't he? We used it last year. I did say, didn't I, early in the season that Warnock will end up at QPR to it, but I did actually think it would be February um, when they did it. Um, but he'll, he'll go in there and do Warnock things, and they'll stay up. Uh, they've got good players. Elias Chair, if he gets a tune out, he'll go straight in and he'll look at Elias Chair and think, right, I'm going to build everything around him because he's a quality player. And they'll get out of it. Lyndon Dykes as well. Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll start scoring goals. Trust me. Uh, he'll get Willock. Willock won't be fit, but he'll be played. Um, so he'll be playing Chris Willock and they'll stay up. So we've got to find now another shit team to finish above, which is going to be um, tricky. Um by the way we're playing at the minute. But like Cosy says, we desperately need January, don't we? And, and big changes in January. Otherwise, we will be uh, toast, I think. Um, go on then, what do you reckon? Warnock to keep QPR up if he goes? Cos? Oh, mate, it's going to be absolute humiliation, isn't it? I think uh, if this, you can't argue against it, Matt, because I think like the, the, the players they've got, <laughs> many of them, I think, are getting our starting level, and that's for sure as well. I've, Thought obviously they should have, for me at least should have got a point last week at our place. Sounds like they were, you know, they give us, I think, like it were the last obviously throw of the dice for your mate, Mr. Ainsworth. But yeah, definitely, mate. And I, don't, I mean, I don't know how much money is down there to spend, but there's this one not showed in, you know, with what he kind of had with us, really. I don't think it sometimes matters. He came in obviously without a window for us and just worked with what he's got. And yeah, and you know what? I know it's really weird, isn't it, how it ended with us. and I'm not. I don't think I'm fooled by the you know ended amicably on that as well. I, I think he's going to go there with a massive point to prove, and I don't think he'd. I think he'd rather a bit like us thinking, please get another guy to come down. I don't think he'd want to see us down because I think there's still a bit of love there with a lot of people. But there's no doubt. I think that he'll be motivated to get one over Kevin Nagel, and he's just had spice, just what we just didn't need. Because we, you said it, Matt, that when the I think the week after Warnock left, this is he's just going to be hanging over as this Warnock thing for so long, and. I mean, and for him to come back into the, the division and everything as well, it's just like, well, obviously if it's if it's going to happen, but it's unbelievable. And every other week when we, if we get B and they win, it's going to be, we shouldn't have changed it and stuff like that as well. But unbelievable. Again, who writes this guy's scripts and here comes another one. You can't make it up. So the team he kept up against all the odds kind of maybe pinned him off a bit earlier than he wanted to. He's going to come back with another team who's now below us and looking in deep shit to, mate, we know the rest. Mm. Danny, you look a bit browbeaten by it. Well, I mean, I've always had a soft spot for Warnock because when I started watching around the time that he was here the first time, so I've always been a bit a massive fan. Uh, and I was just shocked that he went when he did, but as soon as all that kicked off with him and Nagel, it was obvious what was going to happen. I would have kept him the whole of this season. I know people were saying, "Oh, but how do you build a team?" Well, we can't spend out anyway, so you, 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 your best bet is keeping the manager that will keep you up, and he would have kept us up. I think fairly easily, mid table ish, and I think I think it might come back to uh, bite us on the ass in the long run uh, because I can't see more. I, I just can't. I, 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 I like um. Like Ian said, like yesterday, I just can't see it getting any better. I just, I, I, I've not seen it that bad. You know, even when Fovering was here, we didn't, we didn't look like that yesterday in that first half. I've got some stats, Danny. I've got my next little sections on Darren Moore, and I'll throw this to you, Killer, as well. But <clears throat> I had a, I had a whole thing. We, we kind of went into it a little bit with the Darren Moore chance earlier. Um, but what I was going to say is, that it's sort of because of his shall we call it Darren Moore's Halloween Havoc and the darkness, if you like, is closing in on him a little bit. But I thought what would be quite interesting is to try and compare his start to previous managers' starts and see how it compares and see see if we can draw something from it which would give us confidence or draw something from it which would say this isn't going to go anywhere. Um, so I've, I've gone back and looked at... So Darren Moore's had seven games in charge, which in the grand scheme of things is nothing whatsoever, no. is it? You know, it's not enough time to imprint your ideas it's not enough time to get things together it's not unless it's a firefighter who's specifically good at coming in and turning things around quickly like like neil warnock then it's it's a difficult situation but jake edwards said we are appointing from a position of strength 
that is what's always going to come back to bite this as well. And Huddersfield yeah. Town were three three games unbeaten when we made the change. I know the Stoke game was Cosy. I think I don't know if he mentioned it earlier or on WhatsApp, but the Stoke game was a bit ropey under Warnock. But it was his last game. It was the final throws. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, we'd beaten West Brom and Rotherham, and we. What's quite interesting is we lost four 0 to Norwich. It wasn't good, but we bounced back with two wins. That yeah. that's Neil Warnock. Um, we've been piped by four three times in the last five games under Darren Moore, and there's been no response whatsoever. Um, so I've had a look at the stats. Um, out of the last 10 managers, let's just take a straw poll. Where do you think Darren Moore sits out of 10, out of the last 10 managers since we were promoted to the championship back in 2012? Second out of 10, worst, Sam you... gets in. Second worst. You're going to go ninth. Killer, you're yeah. going to go? I'd, I'd go ninth. Uh, uh, just Schofield probably worse, but that's a, that's a good yeah, maybe. You're a big. You're forgetting a big one there. That's I, might go eight. I might go eight. Fothering him and him, that's it. Well, if you count in Siwa, I guess, in the Premier League as well. Oh, so. yeah. It's yeah. yeah. Seaworth, so, isn't it? It's Seaworth. Mm. Seaworth. 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 Yeah, all right. So, um, yeah, Darren Moore's played seven, won one, drawn three, lost three. And we probably shouldn't have even won that one game because QPR were, were much better than us. Yeah. Neil Warnock played seven, won two, drawn two, lost three. Only one point more than Darren Moore. So if you want to draw something from that, that's something there. Fothers no. played seven, won two, drawn two, lost three. That's eight points. So that's one point more than Darren Moore. Credit to his family. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Schofield. <laughs> Listen. Danny Schofield played seven, won one, drawn one, lost five. So Danny Schofield, four points. So he's worse than Darren Moore. Yeah. Carlos Corbaran. Who do you think is going to be best, actually, out, out of the last 10? I didn't. I was going to ask that. Who do you think they is going to be best? They never get to good starts, that managers with bounces and stuff, don't we? It's a good question. The, the best one will probably surprise you a little. Might surprise you a little bit, but might not. Who, who are you going for the best in the last 11 years? Best start as a manager. Powell. Powell. Killer's going. Powell. Um, Danny's going. Coventry, um, what's his name? Mark Robbins. And Cosy's going. Yeah, I'm going Mark Robbins as well. Mark Robbins as well. Right, okay. So Corbran got played seven, won three, drawn one, lost three. So 10 points. So technically, as we've gone through, Carlos Corbran's the best so far. Danny Cowley played seven, won two, drawn three, lost two, nine points. Jan Seaworth, Seavert even. Played seven, won one, drawn none, lost six, three points. So Dan, Jan, Jan's league, the worst, obviously. Yeah. I think if we look at Jan's championship record, it's probably just as bad. Um, David Wagner played seven, won three, drew none, lost four, nine points. Chris Powell played seven, won three, drew two, lost two, 11 points. And then Mark Robbins played seven, won three, drawn one, lost three, 10 points. So Chris Powell, killer's right. Chris Powell was the, has made the, made the, well, Chris Powell made the best start to any manager in the last 10 years. Um, and so, so really, what you can take from that is that maybe it's too early to Nija Kondara Moy. He's, he's he's relatively seven points. He's, he's 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 a point or two away from some who went on to do quite successfully well. And when you you look at the squad and the injuries we've got, you have to have a layer of sympathy for him, I think, as well. Um, but I do think he has come in and gone. I'm not tearing this up and then gone and torn it all up completely and, and started to put his own things across. But I just don't see what's happening on the pitch. I think the worrying thing is when when we did our Darren Moore deep dive uh, podcast, I was against the appointment, uh, but I was I was said I'm against the appointment, but I'm open minded enough to let people change my mind and let Darren Moore change my mind. I'll, I'll support him, and I'm open minded. But my issue was that whenever I've seen Darren Moore teams, they're completely disjointed. Um, they make no sense in what they're, they're trying to do. And he's always had better players. So when, when he's at West Brom and Sheffield Wednesday, they had the best team in the league, you know, that both. So the players have found a way to win the game in the end, but they were never, they never really looked convincing when they won games, if that makes any sense. I know Sheffield Wednesday got 96 points last season and, you, and that's the most anyone's ever got without being promoted. They should have won the league, but they didn't. Um, so I, whenever I've seen Darren Mortis, they look disjointed, they look dysfunctional, they look awkward, but they get the job done in a lot of ways. Chris Powell that was quite similar, wasn't he, in, in some ways. I remember that 4-3-3. Remember when he played 4-3-3 and Grant Holt on the left? Remember that? And Grant Holt chasing fullbacks back. That, that's some of the mental things. But we won games. Uh, we beat Nottingham Forest at home, three. I think it was 3-1 and, or 3-0, and that was a really good performance. 
So I'm I'm sat here and I'm, I'm sort of thinking it's probably too early to, you know, there's a lot of people saying more out, get him out quick, you know, early. But it's too, it's surely, you can see it not working and I don't see a way that it's going to work unless the players are changed. So we've got two months, haven't we, of this now. And it's about where we think we're going to be in two months. Are we going to be in the bottom three struggling? And then what happens, like Danny said earlier, what happens with the players then? All of a sudden, there are a lot of players who you've gone in for are thinking, I don't know about this, but Huddersfield Town are second bottom. I don't really fancy being in a relegation battle. Or it could turn things around. We could get Jack Ridoni back quicker than expected. We could get Danny Ward back in a couple of weeks, Kasumu. And all of a sudden, things start to look a little bit better on the field and maybe he can implement things uh, with more... Um, tactical sense to people like me and Killer who sat who sat there and didn't understand what was going on. And and maybe all of a sudden we're picking points up and we, we bob along <coughs> fine and, and it's okay. It, this, I think where I'm going with that is there's no definitive way that it's going at the minute. So I'm sort of thinking maybe we should just calm our skin a little bit. We've been battered a few times. Neil Warnock got battered by four two times, admittedly by the team that won the league by a mile and the team that got to the playoff final. But Maybe we just need to give him a little bit more time. And if we do scramble a one nil win against Watford, everyone all of a sudden will will just the you know the Ferrara will just die down, won't it? And at the end of the day, all these things about food outlets and your fan zones, etc., just don't really matter uh, if the team's not winning yeah. on a Saturday. I think yeah. the big problem is these immortal words, mate, that could come back to haunt. I, I looked them up. We have to act now. To get our man, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That that's the thing. If, if he's come in after someone who's lost ten games in a row and we've shit, that's not a club legend. That is totally different. And the fact we again we mentioned that he'd probably come back to QPR. That's the issue. It's like the board, and it's like I I can kind of see what we did, but again, I said at the time it could look absolutely stupidity if if it don't work out. It's a brave move. I I would said it's. Something to be applauded, and at the moment, like you said, Matt, if we had a full squad for what that's, that's worth at the moment, you know, like you said, Kazumu, we'd have added something definitely yesterday, Ward, Ward, and things. But I, I'm it's just what Killer was saying earlier. I, I, I get we, we fans can be turned around with wins because if we remember when Warnock first came back in the day, the fans wanted him out, and look, mm. all of a sudden, it's like a club legend. But I, I, I it's gonna be really hard to get them on side because. I think people like do at times are still sitting buying to say passing across the back. We saw that carry on last Tuesday with Matty Pearson, and you know uh, people like their football in a certain kind of way. And I think just patience, just get it for it. Get it. But you know what, Matt? What did Pos put on our group? That that what have we won some ridiculous. Is it four out four wins out of four? It was some ridiculous stat. I'll have he to... got it wrong. He got it wrong. He said we've only won four of our last twenty three, and they were like. Mate, yeah. we won like three games in a row at the end of last season. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> but he was, well, he was looking at Corbrand's record long, at the end yeah, of it. Yeah. I think long term, obviously, apart from the playoff season, he's just been losing football no matter who we've had in charge. And I just think yesterday, again, that we're just probably, no, I know Moore's not going to think, well, like, you know, we're aimed at me and he'll probably take it personally. And obviously he did for me when he walked down the tunnel. But, but I think it's just a, like a, he's just almost like five or six seasons of losing football. You're getting beat by your nearest and his humiliated really for m most parts of the game and, and that would just like unleashed everyone and it was just strange just talking to people it's like where do we kind of go from here and like you said I only think even if we scrambled a, a win on Saturday I don't think that does much good I think a derby game is such a big thing Matt and, and it's seen off quite a lot of our managers over the years uh, when you get battered on that who, who were the infamous who were in charge when the McDermott the Carry on with Matt Robbins. Matt Robbins, yeah. I think after that, mate, borrowed time, and yeah, we we've got to get to that window. I I, I don't like to wish my life away, but I wished it would December the thirty first now, mate. But do you reckon Town would have anyone lined up for January first? Though you've seen what I know it's a different. Board, that, you've seen what we're like, haven't yeah. you? We, we usually get someone by the end of the window, don't we? But yeah, but I mean, it's like that free agent. Who's this uh, striker that that would? Been on oh, trial, the possibly. yeah, the son of Darren Moore's agent. Yeah, that's who it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> so DJ Sturridge is the son of Dean Sturridge, who is Darren Moore's agent. Yeah, Dean Sturridge was a good player back in the day. You remember him at Darren Moore at Derby? It was decent, yeah. Well, I'm in there. He used to have some night games against us. Yeah, it was good. No, he's Dean at, he's he's if DJ worried. Sturridge yeah. is, is anywhere near as good, then yeah, get him signed. Yeah. Oh, oh man, it's just Saturday's such a big game. And when you think 
he said, didn't he, after yesterday, that it's unlikely to, well, we're not going to have anyone then back who were injured. Hawks out, banned. This is like, he's, honestly, there's so many problems at the club. It's just scary, man. Your pender, that's who you want in. Apparently, it's pronounced Tom your pender rather than your pender. Not Tom your pender. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, it might might see him next week. And there's a lot of people excited by him, especially Mr. Richard Kosmala, who's incredibly excited by Tommy Appender because he's been to a few B-team games. But let's talk about something a little bit different. In the spirit of Halloween, let's talk about Ghosts of the Past, uh, which is a little bit more Scrooge, isn't it, than Halloween. But we we looked at Tom Edwards, and I'm going to st- I'm going to stop digging in at Tom Edwards in a minute because... It feels like we're bullying a little bit on, on the poor guy. And I've seen I've seen interviews with Tom Edwards, and he comes across as a really likable bloke. So if he was a dickhead, I could really sort of like, a bit, it would be much easier to double foot him a little bit. But he actually comes across as a really good lad. So it's so you feel slightly guilty when you have to say how bad he was. But Chicken gave him a one in the examiner, which led, us, led Cozzy over there to think, can you think of any worse performances in a blue and white shirt? Individual performances, in you know, specific performances in a blue and white shirt. And I'm going to throw you over to the bold maestro here who put that out on Twitter. So take it away, Mr. Kosmala. Yeah, it's, uh, I put a tweet out. I just thought a bit of therapy. And yeah, I do feel bad kind of like, because it's more than just one man, obviously, why we lost yesterday. So yeah, just almost like, I don't even, because obviously it was only 50 minutes if you include the five-minute stoppage time. It's almost like, because people are saying every time, like Dear Carby, for example, but I'm talking about like the obvious one, which although man, you've got an absolute chump card that I'll wheel out in a minute, but Kwame do too. I don't <laughs> know which, ooh, ooh, which game was that against Matt. Or did he right, play? So I've, ri- yeah. I've written some down from memory. Uh, I quickly wrote some down from memory. There's probably loads that I've forgotten. I think Lee Morris made a good point where he sort of said, you eventually forget the bad ones. And, what I remember about Kwame Hadotu, apart from Phil, Phil Senior's story about him running over a squirrel on the way to training and then being too upset to train afterwards, <laughs> apart, from that, apart from that story, what I remember about Kwame Hadotu is I remember his debut and I remember thinking, we've got, at the time, signing players from abroad was really rare. So when you sign someone from Augsair in 1999, yeah. it's exciting and you think this guy's going to be great. <laughs> and he came on against Norwich cool. for <laughs> 10 minutes. And he was pretty good on his debut. He came off the bench, 10 minutes, he played right back. And he was he was all action, a little bit ropey, a little bit sketchy with the ball. But he was he had a shot from outside the box, which flashed over the bar. And he didn't really have time to do anything other than that. So he kept, everyone, I think everyone was sort of thinking, that was all right, that. And then he played in, against Notts County in the League Cup and got subbed, playing centre-back, which if you get subbed as a centre-back, there's something going wrong there, isn't there, Killer? And then he played right back against Fulham in the league and he was taken off after 38 minutes against Fulham. Um, he didn't even wow. see out half time and that's the, I think that's probably the game where which did for him and he ne- we never saw him again and uh, neither did the squirrels of Huddersfield. Yeah, uh, got other ones here. Again, who is this fat, wasn't Mark Jackson hauled off at half time in that 7-1 defeat at Barnsley and never seen again. Do you remember him? He was, I, re- I remember yeah, him being really yeah. rubbish. We got him from Leeds, didn't we, uh, Mark Jackson? Yeah. He was, he was, he was, him and Sam Collins played centre-back, and it's yeah. the slowest combo we've ever had, yeah. The legend, Mr Neil Wade, Simon Davis at home to Bradford on loan from Man United. Good reputation, he was. But we were 3-0 down in no time. He stood at the Mate. wrong side of the post on the <laughs> corner for what they scored direct. We, we all, <laughs> I, I swear, we only signed Simon Davis because we got Ben Thornley the year before, and Ben Thornley was really good. So we thought we'll go back to Man United and get the next left midfielder. And we played him, and Brian Orton played him centre midfield in that game against Bradford. And he stood, Chris Waddle was swinging those in swinging corners, in, wasn't it? And Chris Waddle was a oh, great player back yeah. in the day. And he stood on the outside of the post off the pitch, and the ball went straight in where his head would have been if it had been stood in the right place. And he just, he never, he never recovered, did he, Simon Davies, after that? I think he played three or four games, but. Ran it. It's amazing how people just remember specific games. I love stuff like this. Ran it. Danny Ratchi, a substitute versus crew away 2007. He touched his air more than he touched the ball. <laughs> <I> love, <laughs> <laughs> and Bet is uh, a, a nice. Uh, and Bet if he looting away is up there. Oh, I love yeah, yeah, I've got yeah. that written down. Yeah. Remember yeah. David or, or against Reading as well. He was really Remember good. Remember David Unsworth? He was dreadful every yeah, game. He's, he's we'll, mention. Yeah. Played Millwall away. We play, I just remember going to Millwall away. And I think we lost 3 1. And he was, it was the worst I've ever seen anyone play. 
but he did score our penalty, if I remember right. No, he missed. He missed. Did he miss it? The he guy had it. never missed a penalty in his bloody life, and he then he turned up 15 <laughs> yeah. stone overweight and then takes a penalty at Millwall. Yeah. Oh, he was, he was huge. A, I know I'm not one to speak, but Jesus Christ, he was a professional footballer, and he was he must have been 15 half, 16 stone. He was huge. Easy, yeah. Matt, what about this one, Matt? I went to this game random as all. Ivan Porovic. Shows me away in the cup. Do you remember him? Oh, yeah. my words. People just, like, coming in. Well, I used to see. Uh, used to. I saw him yeah. a few times when I when I worked in Leeds, where the South Bank is. He lived at Candle House in Leeds, which is in the uh, near Fazenda yeah. and stuff. So I saw him walking yeah. there through there a couple. Yeah, of this times. is a good shout. Stankovic against Wigan in a promotion season was decent. After that, mind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah dude. Who now, my, fa- my favourite one's not been mentioned here. Lucas Jutkovic against Cheltenham at home, where the town fans booed him off after thirty minutes. Is that we where he threw his shirt? We were 2 0 down and yeah. he, we booed him. Honestly, it was ridiculous. He lasted 31 minutes before they took him off. We ended up drawing 2 all. But Is the only time I can it? remember a town, fa- town fans booing a lone player off and he never played for us again. That's where he threw it. Is that where he threw his shirt when he went off and Lee Clark threw it back at him? Yeah. <laughs> that, that was one. <laughs> I, li- I liked Lee Clark for that. That was brilliant. He's like, can put that back on. I, I like Jason it. Davidson's yeah. getting a few uh, mentions. Jeez, I don't think yeah. you can pick one out for Jason. Do you no. know my favourite Jason Davidson thing is? He did an interview for, uh, what's the Australian publication called, Killer? Uh, it's like World of Football. It's their version of World of Football or something. Oh, and he did it. Sports. Yeah, yeah, he did an interview with them and he made out, he was, he, it's, the interview was unbelievable. He makes out he's our star player and he's going about, oh yeah, I'm, I'm settled into the team. I'm now the chief set piece taker, and I'm on this and this and this. And he made out he was like the best player. And I, I read that, and I was like, "What is this guy on about?" He was, but he, in, in his head, he was our best player. He was unbelievable. <laughs> this, this is a great song. I mean, David Unsworth can't remember a particular game. But I'll never forget my excitement at the prospect of a Premier League legend playing for us. Then seeing a 35 year old fat man waddle onto the pitch. He was massive. He was massive. <laughs> Oh, it's like the it's like the scene in Jurassic Park, isn't it? When uh, when they're in the car and the water's going. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> David Unz was good. It was just incredible as well. Uh, someone mentioned about Tommy Elphick had a disastrous uh, debut. I remember he, he was poor, wasn't he? But it won't never, really yeah, I won't. I won't put it up there with some of the stinkers. He, he tried to chest no. it back to Gr- Grabara, didn't he? And it, this goes. Yeah, but Gordon <laughs> Tucker's getting mentioned. John Kelly. Yep. Yeah. What about Matt everyone. Crooks? Remember Matt? Was it Crooks that? Um... Yeah, that oh, played, played yeah, yeah. Matt yeah. last game, wasn't it? Yeah, Matt Effie Sodji against Gunthorpe when we John McAliska came on at the end of the game to save us and, and we won three two at the end. But I think Sodji gave a penalty away an own goal and got sent off. Is that game. where he just got player of the month as well? Yeah. He, yeah, he, he, got like player, he picked up player of the month before the game, didn't he? And then <laughs> and then he got he scored an own goal, got give a penalty away and got sent out. It was incredible that day. That was just Effie Sodji though, wasn't it? That's just so effy. Yeah, Unsworth's getting loads of messages uh, about it. But you know what, Matt? I think you're gonna this. I, I, no one else has mentioned this, and I will daily. I've got some. I've got. I've got some it. written down. Some. Some that I wrote down, and they. They sort of from when we were in the bottom division. Really, do you remember John Newby's debut against Cambridge? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was. Dr- we it was thought we'd signed a, a really good because he'd been on loan at Bury and he'd scored Liverpool quite a lot of goals. Legend, and, mate, yeah, <laughs> and he, yeah, John Newby's debut versus Cambridge. There's another one played against Cambridge in the same game. I've got no idea we didn't lose this game. Tyrone Thompson, do you remember oh, Tyrone Thompson yes. against Cambridge? That's a legend, yeah. Got hooked Tyrone after Thompson, who minutes. we signed, we signed him though because he played well against Bob Pepper in the Wembley Wizards game in, as a trialist. <laughs> and we thought, town fans. <laughs> Town fans genuinely chanted, sign him up as he came off in a, in, in that friendly. After and, rinsing um, 67-year-old Bod Pepper down the flank. <laughs> That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, he, he, um, yeah, he got hooked after 50 minutes in that game and never started another game for us. Um, Tim Clark versus Chester City in 92-93. This is where he really struggled with the back pass all day, shanked everything that came to him. So Tim Clark went, do you know what? I'm not going to hit the f- him. I'm not going to hit this first time anymore. And he decided he was going to start taking on strikers, and he took on he took on a striker of Chester City, and it landed, and he fell over, and it landed at the feet of John Kelly, who'd been with us the season before. John Kelly's been named has been shit on on this already because his name checked him, and John Kelly scored from about thirty yards or something. He just put it in the empty net, and 
Tim Clark had a shocker. I've got Simon Davies. Steve Baker versus Tranmere in 1999. Another <laughs> another right back who was a little bit overweight, got rinsed exactly like Tom Edwards did. Some Yutinakiyama's first half against Cardiff got mentioned. But well, the one for me which always stands out as one of the worst individual performances I've ever seen. <laughs> Let's get a drum roll. 2003, Martin Booty, at left back, <laughs> played left back against Doncaster. It was the old and, stadium, and, wasn't it? Yeah. I've never seen anyone out of, as out of their depth. At this point, it looked like it. Genu- I know people always say Booty it looked like, com- it looked like he won a competition to play a game, but he genuinely looked like he'd never, oh, never played man. before. It was like it's like when you shot, you know, like on a Sunday, you shot numbers, and you and you just draft in someone's dad or something in the Sunday <laughs> league, and he. And he can't move, and you put, and he's putting his hand up for offside, and there's three people dropping off, and it would just, and then, th- and then three of them are moving out, and he stood there like looking around. He's, he was so bad that day, and then I think that was it. I don't think he ever played for us again. And Jacko just got him to do the bibs and cones around the training ground because he was still under contract, and we couldn't release him. So that's, what did the examiner give him Matt, for that? If he didn't give him a one, I it? don't know. Mel, that's back to Mel Booth in it, but Mel, I don't think Mel Booth, Mel Booth had ever give him a one, but. Yeah, Martin Booty for me versus Doncaster. And his, his son Regan were decent, you know. I was still quite disappointed he never broke through. I thought Regan Booty was quite a good player who came through the academy, but ended up at Aldershot and bits and pieces, I think. But yeah, I think that's all you got there, isn't it, Cos? Yeah, and a few mentions for the. Uh, someone just mentioned Naki Hammer. There's a couple of that recent performances, obviously, on Tuesday night against Cardiff, but. Yeah, yeah first half it, was bad, yeah. wasn't it? Second half was was all right, so probably... I knew, it, I knew it did send into a kind of a, yeah, the worst players you've seen kind of thing, but I just wanted to try and lighten up the... <laughs> oh, God, this is a grim morning, wasn't it, when you woke up? And one of those awful moments as a town fan when it's like, obviously we've had the playoff wins, but it's like, oh, yeah, that actually did happen yesterday, and, oh, God. When you realise, though, all those moments that we spoke about, we are normally r- quite rubbish, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're living the dream at the minute, aren't we? We do. We're normally quite rubbish. <laughs> yeah. Do you want some good news? Yeah. HTFC women beat West Brom four three to get today to get into the FA oh, Women's yeah. National League Cup quarterfinal. So well done to Huddersfield yeah. Town women. That's uh, that's always a good thing. But I don't really have anything more on the agenda to go into. And so has anybody get got any other business before we we break away for uh, a break? No, I did. <sighs> Ben Wilds just yeah. I refuse to believe he can be like this. He doesn't look fit to me, mate. I don't. I, something's not right. It's this isn't the man we thought. Yeah, we I'm led to believe that mate he might be carrying an injury. Um, which, yeah. to be fair, if he needs rest, he's not going to get it at the minute, is he? Because we don't have anyone else to put in the team, so he's probably playing through an injury at the moment. Um, so yeah, bear with him, I guess, Ben Wiles. We'll see. We'll see better days from Ben Wiles. Yeah, a couple of tweeted in about Cartwright, a bit concerned, obviously, the Edwards and lack of what we brought in. It's people are worried about January and stuff, but it's look, Neil Warnock had full transfer control in 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 the summer, um, but Mark Cartwright did sign Tom Edwards and uh, Bergzog from from what I know, whether that's correct or not. You know, I'll put my hands up if it's not. I mean, Tom Edwards and Bergzog. I can see why people might be worried going into January if that's the level. Uh, Tom Edwards is the level, but he's been here six months. You know, six, six, seven, eight months now. His feet are under the table. It's uh, a big, a big month for him, isn't it, Mark Cartwright? So if he delivers, uh, we'll be the first on the podcast to pat him on the back, and Cosy will be saying bold is best, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, won't mm. you? And like you usually do, do think, Cosy. Just, just as a final pod, do you think we're just massively overreacting? For, for against a good lead side, or do you think yeah, but that's what we do. That's what you do in a podcast, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or is it just a combination of seasons of shit? The Warnock took the Warnock thing at an home defeat no. on Tuesday, and then no, I think that think... big explosion no. in the stands yesterday, which I've never really heard picture like that. I work. We've, we've been shafted. Away that. We've been beaten four one by Leeds, four one by Birmingham, and four 0 by Cardiff in the last five games. I don't think it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's just um... the nature of it as well, though. They look like strangers. They look like yeah. strangers yesterday, and that's that's the worry for me. It's not really uh, if we'd have lost to Leeds and we'd have they'd have looked like they had a plan. They just looked like there was no. It's just like they just turned up off bus and went right. You you play right back. You play. You know what I mean? It just it didn't yeah. look like they didn't plan any of it. What Killer was saying, it's just the contrast though. We went from that, you know, great game against Ipswich to a few days later at Birmingham, just 
totally changed and looking like a kind of a pub team. And then we, we you know, we yeah, all right, we shouldn't have beat QPR, but for a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, we were great. I just can't cope with this bipolar town. It's just crazy. Um, yeah. At least it's mental, because it. it's all yeah. men- the, the players look mentally different now. Or just a few weeks yeah, in. Yeah. If, Dar- if, if Darren Moore had been here for, for two years and we saw what's gone in the last few games, I think it'd be even worse, wouldn't it? We'd be expecting him to leave mm-hmm. because the players look like they've checked out. And that, to me, is the that's, worry. I'm not that's saying they true. have, but to me, on the pitch yesterday, it looked like that's what was going on. Matt, a better comparison, I think, to, to your first seven games for other man- managers that we've had before would be the points per game to the seven games previously when a manager's left. Because I'm pretty sure Darren Moore will have the worst points per game compared to the predecessor um, that I can imagine. I, I think even Wagner probably got more than Syvert did. And other than that, I don't think anyone will be close. And mentally, the players have gone from loving Neil Warnock. Everyone's been pretty open on that. You can see that. So having Darren Moore in, that's not, nothing to say that he's not a, a, a good bloke or whatnot, but the players didn't seem to want that change. That change seemed to have come from the town hierarchy. And our players are a fickle bunch because they're normally only at a club for a little bit of time. They, they don't have the same affection that we have for this field town. And the worry is, looking at what's gone in the last few games, some of them mentally don't look like they were where they were at just a few games ago with Neil Warnock. And that is a big worry because all of a sudden now, we're looking at getting to January in contention of staying up. We're not looking at the playoffs that Neil Warnock spoke about when he left, thinking there was no reason we couldn't push on to that. We're now hoping we can get to January in time to bring some signings in, to have a bit more reinforcement, to have a good go at staying up in, in the new year. And that's such a change from just seven games ago. Not to piss on your chips, killer, but um, Jan Sievert got more points than Wagner did. Oh, well, I did throw it in there. I did, I'll did. i take Powell's. I got that bang on. And I did say it might yeah, maybe Powell, that one, Matt. Powell, but, yeah. but I don't think anyone else um, would, would would be there. No, I mean... But it's more that Darren Moore will have fewer points per game than his predecessor. Whereas sivert has got more than... Has he got, did he have less than Wagner? Uh, Sievert got three. David Wagner had one point. We only got the nil-nil draw against Cardiff. We lost the previous six. And then the one before the previous six looks like it was Brighton, that Brighton game. Which right, okay. which broke everything, didn't it? So yeah, so there we go. But finally, yeah. Nigel Pearson's gone, hasn't he? Honestly, how he kept his job for all that time. Yeah, Bristol City do that. They just appoint crap managers, don't? They? Usually, mm-hmm. like Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson. Uh, yeah. They usually throw quite a lot of money at it. Like Steve Lansdowne has done a really great job down there, building lots of infrastructure and stuff. And Bristol City runs really well now. They've got loads going on down at the ground. It's a good ground now. They've got the basketball team play there, haven't they? They've got a new training complex which have been passed, which yeah, looks really good. That, yeah. They've they've really t- you know, Steve Lansdowne's done so many good things there, but for me, he's never appointed a decent manager, and it's always perplexed me because I've always thought if they ever get a mm-hmm. decent manager, Bristol City, they'll go they'll go towards the top six, and then yeah. he gives it to like Johnson, Pearson, and mm. Dean Holden. It's like what's what's going on there? It's it's like he just can't find a good manager when when they get a good manager, Bristol City. All of a sudden, they'll, you'll you'll see them towards the top six, and everyone will go, "Where have they come from?" And it'll be because they've built really well off the pitch, but on the on it, they just haven't got the the right man. But that's my. But you know, just before we go, you just you know when you think life's crew yesterday afternoon, I was looking for some inspiration, and it popped up. Did it Sutton two Bradford one a late winner. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the lesson is there's always somebody worse <laughs> off. <isn't there? laughs> oh, God. Bless them. Well, always trying I'm to make glad... us feel better, aren't they? Oh, but, God. I'm but... glad we've got this out of the way. This was like a, a trip to the dentist for a root canal this today. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> right. I'll, I think we'll just round this up. So I'll, I'll end the show just by saying that, in, in my opinion, Huddersfield Town have been in the throes of a bit of a death spiral, really, since Dean Hoyle decided he was selling the club back in, in 2019. Years of sales and previous regimes kicking the can of reinvestment down the road. It's, it just feels like it's come home to roost as we find ourselves with, you know, a, a, a weak squad. Okay, first 11 weak squad. No real academy backing it up either. Um, the first team and, and new and the new owners new to the English game is strapped by FFI rules, um, which I think are, are loosening now, which would be great. And I think he's now realising that the size of the investment needed to just get Huddersfield to stand still in the second tier of English football is pretty sizable. Um, is it Darren Moore's fault? No. Is it Kevin Nagel's fault? No. But these are the guys that can fix it, and I wish them all the best in the attempts to do so. And uh, 
Me too. The best, the best of luck to them because I think there's a lot of people falling out of love with football. So we'll leave it there. Thanks very much. It's uh, it's been a painful experience going back through the last week, but thanks, thanks, Killer. Thanks, Danny. Uh, thanks, Cozzy. Uh, where can we see the Serpent Queen, Danny? Uh, it's on Lionsgate. You can get it on Amazon Prime. Get so, it on um... it. Get on it. It's worth it just for Danny, Absolutely. Danny and his uh, on-screen brothers' uh, camaraderie. That's mm. it from us. Uh, we'll we'll speak to you again next week. There's a team that is dear to its followers. The colors are bright blue and white. They're a team of renown They're the pride of the town And the game of football is their delight And all the while upon the field of play Thousands loudly cheer them on the way Often you can hear them say Who can be the town today And then the bells will ring so merrily And every goal shall be a memory So town play up And bring that cup Back to Huddersfield So town play up And bring the cup Back to Huddersfield